Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the uh, subject of today's video, uh, we're going to take a look at a case study for one of my clients. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, welcome to Complexity Made Simple. And this, uh, this very straightforward little case study, which is about why a designed experiment always works. Uh, I constantly get asked whenever I'm teaching this stuff, um, what happens if the experiment uh, doesn't work? And I always say to my classes, designed experiments always work. Um, whether they find the solution or not, and there's a reason why designed experiments always work, it's because they are designed to give you process knowledge. They are not designed to necessarily find the solution and because they're designed for process knowledge they will always do that so let's look at the difference between what you might call one factor testing or skill based testing and a designed experiment with skill based testing typically you'll approach it like this you have a problem you use your skill experience etc what do you do? Well, you try to design a solution, a set of settings, changes to the process that you think are going to work. And then what do you do next? Well, you test it. And all the test, when you do it that way, is designed to tell you is whether you passed or failed. And that's all it will tell you. And of course, if you fail, it means you have to go around again. But the experiment is not, a type of experiment is not giving you process knowledge. It just says you chose one solution, that solution doesn't work, try again. Very little process knowledge comes out of that type of testing technique. When you do a DOE, it's very different. Because we've still got the problem. By the way, we are still going to use your skill. I'm going to throw that away. I don't use the skill, though, to design the solution. I use the skill to design the test to get the maximum knowledge. That's what the skill is about. And once we've got maximum knowledge out the test, then maybe what we can do is design a solution. However, there will always be maximum knowledge coming out of the test. And therefore, because there's always process knowledge, the designed experiment always works. So let's show you this little case study. Um, I'm not going to show you the whole project because that's not the point. Uh, someone presented this experiment to me the other day. And it was just a fantastic example of the experiment didn't find the solution, but the process knowledge they gained was fantastic because it helped them to save money and that's the point gave them process knowledge so let's let's take a look at this thing well it's a it's a pouch sealing uh, process uh, you can see the uh, the pouch just being heat sealed there there's a there's a heating element that, that seals across there and the problem is that the pouch isn't isn't sealing correctly so I think there's a video on the next uh, on the next page um, so let's take a look and we'll just play this you'll see that the pouch first of all is being filled with a liquid you see the liquid going into the pouch then the pouch gets put on the sealing machine and there's a little bit of heat there's a little bit of time and temperature etc and the pouch is sealed and there's the there's the basic process so I'll just I'll switch that off. So let me show you the experiment that they decided to do within the project. So there was other things that they, they, they're doing within the project, but they presented this little um, three-factor experiment. So the first thing to say, of course, is sample size, 30 to 50, which is fantastic. Nice statistical sample size designed to give you proper knowledge instead of going at it off baked and doing three or four which you what that's all about 30 to 50 
but you know, very efficient because with 30 to 50, we can test, in this case, we're gonna test three variables, but you could have tested up to 11 variables with the same sample size. The three variables they play with are the heat, the pressure, and the cooling time. So the heat look, 200 to 240, the pressure 0.6 to 0.8, and the cooling time in between each pouch, 10 seconds to 40 seconds. So they're the three variables that they decided with their skill, with the most important variables to make this sealing process work properly. They did the experiment and then they did the analysis. And let me show you, I'm gonna blow this up so we can see it a little bit better. So I'll blow this regression table up. So this is the regression table. First thing to look at, look, the R squared, 0.14 here. That basically means that the three variables that they decided to play with here had almost negligible effect on the result. Uh, and in fact, the p-values here, you know anything about the statistics, the hypothesis tests, none of the hypothesis tests are in the right area. So the hypothesis tests are basically saying heat, pressure, cooling time, they don't have any effect on the result, none whatsoever. Uh, so there's no link. Now, of course, the people that did this experiment are quite disappointed because they haven't found the solution. And in one, on one level, you'd say the DOE, it didn't work. There you go. Experiments don't always work. Now, now, this gave you knowledge. So what did I tell them to do next? Well, what I tell them to do next is to take the heat down to the lowest setting, to take the pressure to the lowest setting, and to take the weight time to the lowest setting and basically save money. If these variables don't do anything. That's fantastic news because you can put them to the cheapest. You don't have to concern yourself with, with spending time writing them into lots of control systems and, and being very, very careful about where they're set, etc. Just put them to the cheapest and save money because that is process knowledge. And because a DOE generates process knowledge, they always work. No other testing technique can do this. We often say to people, please work smarter, not harder. Here is a tool that does exactly that. It always generates process knowledge. What we need you to do next is to put your wisdom to that process knowledge. And if you put, you put your wisdom with the knowledge that it's gained, you are going to save cash better than any of your competitors. And that's what this is about. DOEs always work. They always give you process knowledge. Well, I hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, if you've got any questions about that topic, or indeed anything to do with Six Sigma, or Lean for that matter, give me a call and I hope to hear from you soon.